Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to present an opening trap that you can play as black in the Kaur Khan if your opponent plays a little passive. The trap is known as the Karls Trap, named after Karl Karls, who snared Schuster in a trap in a famous game in 1914 at Oldenburg. To show that even today um, strong players can fought for the trap, I picked an exact copy of the game that was played between Shinkovich and Grigoriev in 2009. You can see the critical position already on the board, it's black to move and win right at the spot, but Take your time, before we just jump right into the tactic, I of course want to show you how to reach the position and what White should have done to avoid to get trapped. So without further ado, it's time to checkmate. So the game started with the move e4, and here black responded with c6, this is known as the Karl Kahn defense. White grabbed the big center right away and played the move d4, and black attacked the center with d5. And now white developed the knight to c3, protecting the e4 pawn, but black um, captured it anyway, and white recaptured. And after the move knight to f6, we see a position that was reached plenty of times, even on top grandmaster level. In this position, Wright decided to play the move knight to g3, and even if it's not a clear mistake, it is at least not very ambitious. Wright's best move in this position would probably have been knight takes f6 check, and now black has to make a decision. The main move would have been e takes f6, known as the Korchner variation, named after Viktor Korchner, who played it in many games. And in this variation, black will get a rapid development, but on the downside, his pawns on the f file are doubled, and so white got the superior pawn structure and probably even the better long term prospects. Another option for um, black would have been to capture the, uh, the knight on f6 with the g pawn, and this is known as the Wonstein Larsen variation, but it is generally considered to be a little bit unsound. Uh, on the other hand, um, black gets some um, pretty dynamic counterplay, you know. I mean, he has the open g file for his rook. His king will most likely uh, castle queenside. So, yeah, um, there are probably some um, unusual attacking chances for uh, black in this variation. Anyway, let's go back to the main game. In the main game, um, white played the move knight to g3. And here, black didn't lose any time and played the move h5, threatening to, t uh, to play h4, attacking the knight on g3. And here, White's best move would have been h4, just stopping any uh, ideas of h, uh, h4, h3 by black. And this position would be, well, it would be about equal, I guess. And, but in the game, White played a slight mistake. He played the move bishop to g5. And this allows black to push on Harry and play the move h4. And now it's white to move, and if you think about it, he really got only two moves. He could retreat the knight to e2, or he could just simply grab off the knight on f6. But only one of them works, the other one is just a terrible mistake. And yeah, in the game, white decided to take the knight on f6, and this just loses the game immediately. What white should have done, he should have played the move knight 3 to e2. But as you already can see, I guess that this position is already slightly better for black because white really got some problems with his king's side pieces. They are all stuck behind uh, the pawns and it's not so easy to develop them because the bishop cannot come out because the knight on e2 blocks it. So yeah, I think that this position is already slightly preferable for black. Anyway, in the game, white decided to take the knight on f6. And as I already told you, this is a big blunder. And I would advise you to pause the video and try to figure out what's Black's best move in this position and how can you win the game. I'll give you three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. If not, I'll give you a little hint. Um, a pawn fork will win the game for Black. 
So with this hint in mind, I hope you find a solution if you are not already solved the puzzle. And I'll give you another three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The right move is h takes g3. Threatening to take on h2 with the rook and also threatening to take bishop on f6. So white really has to play the move bishop to e5 to overprotect the h2 pawn because let's say he would have moved uh, the bishop to g5. Well, then we just simply grab the pawn in h2 and the rook is hanging. He cannot defend it, so he has to grab our rook and then we just simply grab it back. And yeah, this is a pawn fork because we are threatening to go to h1, uh, getting a queen, and we're also threatening to take knight and getting a queen. So yeah, getting a second queen, this position is just simply one for black and there's no hope le left for white, so let's go back. White played the move bishop to e5 just to stop us from taking on h2, but we are small people, we still grab the pawn on h2. I just want to mention that queen to a5 check would have worked as well, because after c3 and rook takes h2, we just transpose to what we will see in the main line. But I have to admit that white got another option in this position, he could have played the move b4. And after queen takes b4 check, king e2, bishop f5, bishop takes g3 and e5, we reach a position where white's king is stuck in the center and black will get a huge attack uh, on the king and the computer thinks that it's already plus three for black so it's already winning but i don't like this variation as much as the variation in the main line because the main line is easier and the finish is just really really beautiful so let's go back to the main line in the main line um, we just simply grab the pawn on h2 with the rook and of course um, white has to recapture the rook because otherwise he would lose the rook. And now comes the move queen to a5 check. Don't make the mistake, don't take the pawn, uh, don't take the rook on h2. I mean, okay, you're threatening to get a second queen, but white is just in time grabbing the pawn and this position is about equal. So a better move for black is queen to a5 check. And let's say white um, plays the move c3. Well, then you just simply play the stunning move, queen takes e5, check. Well, and what can white do now in this position? He has to grab the queen, and then we just simply grab the rook, and we're threatening to gain a new queen, and if you count pieces, well, then we will find out that we're already up a piece. So, being a piece up, white just simply surrendered the game. So yeah, I hope you liked today's video, I hope you learned something, and if you did, please let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. So see you next time and it's again time to checkmate.